I want to ask you about BMI, uh, body mass index, because when studies come out showing potential benefits of a vegetarian diet or um, at least reducing the amount of meat and, and dairy intake, um, oftentimes it's easy to try to poke holes in, in the research by saying, well, meat and, and some types of uh, animal dairy are just very caloric dense foods. So people that consume them are more likely to have a high BMI. And therefore, if you have a higher BMI, we know the evidence is really solid there that there are a variety of diseases that are, are more common. So how, how do you parse this data um, here um, to suggest that these sialic acids may have a role on their own? Good question. So if we look at the Adventist Health Study 2, though, where they looked at almost 100,000 Adventists living in North America, what they were able to show was an association between dietary pattern and BMI. So you had the vegan group with the lowest BMI at around 23. And then you went to the lacto-ovo-vegetarian, which was just north of 25. And then after that was the pesco-vegetarian followed by the semi-vegetarian and then finally the non-vegetarian. And at each step, there was a stepwise increase in BMI. And this was an association. And the point you bring up is, is great is how do we know that they're just not eating more calories? And that's the reason why they have a higher BMI. Well, what they did next was they then looked at the diabetes risk and they found that the same relationship was there for diabetes risk even after they controlled for BMI. So in other words, the same pattern going from vegan all the way to uh, non-vegetarian, if you had a vegan and non-vegetarian together with exactly the same BMI, the risk of diabetes was higher in the non-vegetarian than it was in the vegan, even though they had the same BMI. And we know that, that diabetes, that insulin resistance, that a lot of these things are related to inflammation and related to oxidative stress. And so it's felt that even though the BMI is the same, uh, and BMI doesn't take into account everything, but when they did the, the multi-regression uh, analysis, taking out gender, taking out socioeconomic status, taking out all of these things, there was still a very strong relationship between dietary pattern and risk for diabetes, risk for hypertension, risk for BMI. At the end there, you said at a higher risk for BMI. Are you suggesting that inflammation itself can be a driver for a higher BMI, regardless of calorie intake? Yes, that's very astute. So that's exactly what the evidence that is now coming out seems to show, is that there is a vicious cycle of inflammation leading to obesity, and then obesity leading to inflammation. And this vicious cycle is unfortunately continued, and uh, we don't know if it's the chicken or the egg, but yes, both can lead to both.